Welcome to my seventh video on reinforced concrete design. This is also the second video on limit state design. Textbook used for this video limit state design tool. Let us get back to the main equation and see how all this fit together. In the previous video, I've shown you that in the limit state design, Design strength equals to characteristic strength divided by the partial factor of safety. Also, in the previous video, I've shown you how to get the characteristic strength. Now, I'm going to show you how to get the partial factor of safety. Fortunately, Euro to, Euro code 2 gives us a whole table for it. This is the table in Eurocode 2 specifying the partial factor of safety under various situations. Let me explain in detail. Persistent and transient versus accidental. Persistent load is the weight that is always there, like the self-weight of the structure. This load will not go away. Transient refers to load that come and go, like human traffic. When people go to work, like in the morning, office buildings will have, will have higher transient load. Accidental refers to sudden loadings like explosion or cars ramming into parapet walls. Ultimate and serviceability. As mentioned in the previous video, ultimate refers to the stability of the structure, whilst serviceability refers to comfort and usability. Three types of ultimate loading, which are flexure, which means moment, shear, and bond. Their division is not important here because the partial factors of safety for them are the same. Look at the numbers now. There are only two different numbers depending on the materials, 1.5 for concrete and 1.15 for steel. Steel has a lower partial factor of safety because steel mills have high, higher con quality control and have higher consistency than concrete. For serviceability check, we do not put any partial factor of safety. Why? Because we want the building to be comfortable only in normal working conditions. We do not mind some discomfort when there are some extreme loadings, which do not happen often. Accidental loading. Note that we do not care about serviceability during accidents. When accidents happen, we are more interested in the stability of the structure, not the comfort of the people inside. You will also find that partial factors of safety here is a lot lower than persistent and transient loadings. Partial factor of safety for concrete is only 1.2, while steel has no factor of all. Again, do you know why? Because accidents do not happen every day. This is why a lower partial factor of safety is sufficient. We have done with the partial factors of safety for design strength. Now let's go for the loadings. In Eurocode 2, the word action and loadings are interchangeable. In order to get the design value of action, we take the characteristic action and modify by the factor and multiply, sorry, multiply by the partial factor of safety. Characteristic strength can be obtained the same way as characteristic as characteristic sorry, characteristic action can be obtained in the same way as characteristic strength but on the opposite side of the mean value. This is the page showing characteristic strength from the previous video. For characteristic action, we have this. Note that this time we want to have 95% confidence that all possible loadings or actions are below this number. Now that we have got the characteristic action, let's get back to the partial factor of safety for action. Looks more complex. Let me start by explaining the three main columns. Permanent action means self-weight. The structure will always carry its own weight. That will not change. Next, leading variable action refers to actions that come and go, like human or vehicular traffic. This style of action comes and go. Accompanying variable action means actions like wind, water, current, earthquake, etc. These variable actions do not come and go 
It will not come all at one time. Or it doesn't even come one at a time. Sometimes they come together and we have to cater for it. Within these columns, we have subdivision into unfavorable and favorable. When different actions come together, they can sometimes counter each other. For example, when you put a rock on a table, the weight of the rock is unfavorable to the table because it causes stress at the table's legs. But if somebody tries to overturn the table, then the rock helps the table to resist overturning. Thus, it becomes favorable. One example is resistance against wind. The weight of the building is unfavorable if you want to check the bearing stress on the whole structure. But if you want to check the resistance against wind, the weight becomes favorable. This is also common for checking the stability of underground structures that are built below water table. The weight is unfavorable when checking on the structure's capacity to carry weight. But it becomes favorable when, we, when checking on its resistance to to uplift by water. To some numbers. When we check the whole structure for permanent actions, which means self-weight, we put 1.1 partial factor of safety for unfavorable action and 0.9 for favorable. In other words, the weight is when the weight if the weight is causing trouble, we add 10% to it. But if it is helping, we deduct 10% of its weight. We are basically overestimating the problem and underestimating the solution. We now look at the individual structural members. This time, unfavorable factor is 1.35. One favorable factor stays at 1, which means fact, which no factor. The star at 1.35 means that if the permanent action is less than 45 times of variable action, the code allows a lower factor of 1.25. If we want to do both A and B together, the factors of safety become 1.35 and 1.15 for unfavorable and favorable respectively. Partial factors of safety for all variable actions are simpler. Unfavorable, unfavorable factors are always 1.5 and favorable are always 0. We do not want to rely on variable actions to help us, so we ignore their contributions. Finally, for serviceability limit states, all factors are 1. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.